Aqueous solutions of hydrogen peroxide H2O2 aqueous decompose as in the equation below. A student investigates the decomposition of H2O2 aqueous by measuring the volume of oxygen gas produced over time. All gas volumes are measured at room temperature and pressure. The student uses 25 centimetres cubed of 2.30 moles per decimeter cubed H2O2. From the results, the student determines the concentration of H2O2 aqueous at each time. The student then plots a concentration time graph. Part A. Determine the total volume of oxygen measured at room temperature and pressure that the student should be prepared to collect at in this investigation. Suggest apparatus that would allow this gas volume to be collected, indicating clearly the scale of working. Before we begin answering the question, there are a few key pieces of information in the question that we need to pay attention to and understand first. To begin, the first key piece of information is the molar ratio in the equation we're given. So the molar ratio of hydrogen peroxide to oxygen is a 2 to 1 molar ratio. That means there are twice as many moles of hydrogen peroxide than there are of oxygen. Secondly, the next key piece of information is that all gas volumes are measured at room temperature and pressure. Therefore, we'll be using the equation volume over molar volume in centimetres cubed. This is 24,000 and that gives us the number of moles. Then, the next key piece of information is the volume and concentration of hydrogen peroxide. That is 25 centimetres cubed and 2.30 moles per decimeter cubed of hydrogen peroxide. Therefore, we're going to be using the equation triangle that the number of moles can be calculated by multiplying volume by concentration. And this is an equation triangle. Firstly, we're going to use the equation triangle to work out the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide. So the equation triangle shows that number of moles is volume times concentration. So that would be 25 times 10 to the negative 3, because we're converting centimetres cubed into decimetres cubed, then multiplying this by 2.3, and that gives us 0 0.0575 moles of hydrogen peroxide. Then we look at the molar ratio, our first key piece of information, and it says it is a 2 to 1 molar ratio, therefore the moles of oxygen will be 0 0.0575 divided by 2, which gives us 0 0.02875 moles of oxygen. Now we need to work out the volume of gas collected because that is what the question is asking us to work out. And we can do this using our first equation. So volume over the molar volume for centimetres cubed, this is 24,000, equals moles. So to get volume in centimetres cubed, we multiply moles, 0 0.02875 by 24,000, and that gives us 690 centimetres cubed. Therefore, we need to collect gas in a 1,000 centimetre cubed measuring cylinder. This is the piece of apparatus you'll be using in the experiment. So to get the three marks for this question, you need to work out the moles of oxygen correctly, the volume of oxygen correctly, and say that you're going to use a thousand centimetre cubed measuring cylinder to collect the oxygen gas. Part B. Suggest a different experimental method that would allow the rate of this reaction to be followed over time. What the mark scheme is looking for here is for you to say measure mass lost. The loss is not essential because it's in brackets in the mark scheme, but it is useful to say. The way you'd go about doing this experimentally is have your reaction take place on a mass balance and record the mass at time intervals, for example, every five seconds or every 10 seconds. To get the mark for this part of the question, you need to say measure mass loss. Part C, 
Determine the initial rate of reaction, the order with respect to H2O2, and the rate constant. Your answer must show full working on the graph and on the lines below. Let's begin by working out the initial rate of reaction. We need to do this by working out the tangent, or drawing a tangent, and working out the gradient of the tangent at t equals zero. So if I just demonstrate, I've got a ruler and it's lined up at t equals zero. We're going to cross at one point and we'll get the tangent to the graph as shown. Next, we need to work out the gradient. A gradient is calculated by the change in y divided by the change in x. If we took two y values and two x values, for example, two and one can be our two y values. So our gradient would be two minus one divided by their respective x values. For two, well, it's three across and that would leave us here, which is 150 seconds. Then for one, that is going to leave us here, which is four across from the 500 each small square is worth 50 seconds, therefore it's 700 seconds, making our gradient denominator 700 minus 150, which gives us 1.8 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per decimeter cubed per second as our units for initial rate of reaction. Now we're going to work out the order of reaction with respect to H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide. We can work out the order of reaction with respect to hydrogen peroxide by working out half-lives. Half-lives will be calculated by the time it takes the concentration of hydrogen peroxide to decrease by half. So we can use two and one as our first decreasing by half. And if we read across on the graph, we've got two moles per decimeter cubed, landing on our time at 200 seconds. And then for one, following this along to the graph or the plotted graph, and that lands here at 1,100 seconds, making our first half-life 1,100 minus 200, and that gives us 900 seconds as our first half-life but we need two half-lives to comment on the order of reaction therefore our next half-life could be one and half because we need to make sure we're decreasing by half each time if we follow the half along to the graph and we see where it lands on the time 2000 therefore our next half-life will be 2000 minus 1100 which gives us 900 seconds. So when commenting on order of reaction will be constant half-lives because they're both 900 and we can write that in brackets, 900 seconds. So it's a first order with respect to hydrogen peroxide. And to finish, we're going to work out the rate constant. The general equation for a rate constant is K equals rate over concentration of, in this case, hydrogen peroxide. Therefore, we need some information from part A to help us find the rate constant. The information we need is the initial rate of reaction. Well, we have that in part C, the initial rate is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 3, but we need the concentration of hydrogen peroxide, which we're given in part A, and we can refer back and see that it was 2.3 moles per decimeter cubed. Therefore, we're going to divide by 2.3, and that gives us a rate constant of 7.8 times 10 to the negative 4, seconds, well, seconds to the minus one. We know these units because rate is measured in moles per decimeter cubed per second. 
and then concentration is moles per decimeter cubed. Therefore, if we were to cancel out our units, we can cancel out our moles per decimeter cubed, so we're left with per second, or seconds to the minus one. To get the f six marks for this question, you need to find the initial rate of reaction correctly. You then need to find two half-lives and show them on the graph. So plotting the tangent in part one to work out the initial rate of reaction and half-lives on the graph. Working on the graph, they are two marks. Then the correct calculations with this information, so working out initial rate of reaction, saying that there's constant half-lives, it's first order. There are the other two marks. So that's four marks in total for the first two stages and using the graph. Then rate constant, that is your last two marks with the correct units. The correct units is the sixth mark. And that is how you get six marks for this question.